Today's day 25. Yesterday I hiked as much as I could, but my crutches started to fall apart, like splitting up at the top. And um, I, in the end, I ended up uh, putting the padding on, binding them up, because not only does the pad of cloth uh, make it more comfortable, but also kind of holds it together to keep it from splitting. So I, I sacrificed uh, my least favorite shirt that I picked up at that house and, uh, and wrapped it up around there. So that should reinforce the crutch. Uh, I, I managed to go what I, I hope was a couple more miles, uh, and that brought me here. Uh, I didn't really set up my tarp or anything, I just needed to get off my legs. Um, I just wrapped myself in it, and when I was doing it, I realized my tarp has a brown side. <laughs> um, which, you know, I was thinking about camouflage, and I'm like, idiot, the one side of this thing's already brown for you. So. I just wrapped myself in it. I've got my leg elevated all last night. It's still really, really swollen this morning, worse than yesterday. So I think, I, I feel like I just need to not move today. Just keep it elevated f just for one day. Because I feel like if I just keep going on it, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a bad situation. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, but if I just keep letting this thing swell up, I don't know, it's not gonna be good. So, uh, I'm just here and I feel like I'm wasting my day away. You know, wasting my resources while I'm not accumulating or collecting anything new, but it sucks. But yeah, so I'm just here. I'm elevating my leg. And uh, yeah, I'm just here for the day. Yesterday feels like an enormous waste of time. I I was here all day and I I tried to be light on resource use. I, I didn't touch any of my juice that I'd gotten from that house, but I, I did finish up all the water. And uh, I, I woke up this morning and my my ankle, it's not, it's not any better than it was the other day. I was really hoping I was gonna wake up and the swelling would be going down but it's not. And I don't know, I mean, should I spend another day here? It just seems like a waste of time. I'm running through resources. I'm not collecting anything. Monitor this group of frequencies for 26 more seconds. Repeat, this is LTAP scanning. Hello, this is, uh, this is Praxis. My name is Tyler, and I'm talking to you from a small town in the Pacific Northwest, where we've been completely surrounded by the alien invaders pretty much since it started. I'm calling you from a safe house for the cyber activist group Synonymous. They turned this room into a sort of Faraday cage, and I found this box labeled Tactical Ham. So I opened it thinking, well, inside of it was this device that seems to monitor ham radio frequencies, and that's how I'm talking to you now. How are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm, I'm just calling you on a, a ham radio. Uh, it's pretty much all I have after I blew up my house. It's a long story. Wow, it sounds like you've been through a lot, Praxis. I'm sorry to hear about your losses. Uh, things have been quite a bit different here. The military put our town under martial law as soon as they knew about the aliens. And when the aliens arrived, there was a massive air battle and then electromagnetic pulse. And we've been completely cut off ever since then because the aliens form sort of a ring around our town and they vaporize anybody who tries to leave or who tries to fight them. Things were pretty much just pure chaos in the few days following that. The military was in disarray and tried to regroup at gun stores and warehouses to keep those places from being overrun. And when people realized that they couldn't get anything at these places, they just diffused into the neighborhoods. And that's where a lot of the panic and fighting and killing happened. The next few days were just really ugly because there was a lot of fighting and a lot of people were dying from the fighting and just in hospitals, people who lacked medication that they needed. And everybody was just in a horrible mood, even if they had food, because it was just so stressful and everybody was panicking. Uh, but I was fortunate enough to be able to go to my friend's house. She uh, lived alone and was happy to have somebody there to help watch her back. And she's sort of a small homesteader, like a lot of people in this area. And so we were able to just lay low with the supplies that I had in my car and that she already had and some of the small animals that she kept. Uh, we were able to just lay low and stay out of a lot of the fighting and the desperation of those first few days. 
we started talking to some other people around here because there were a lot of people who just had enough food to last for a few weeks without having to go fight and die over it. And a lot of us were pretty scared that the military or some of these groups would start to show up and sort of exert power over the area uh, because we're just in our little microcosm of a town here. But it actually turns out that some of the community leaders, like church leaders, the military guys, the sheriff, uh, they were actually forming sort of a backbone of a mini society. Uh, because they had the guns and the food, uh, they were actually starting to have people who came to them for food work for them and start to form uh, sort of factions that were producing resources and keeping people safe and keeping things from entering a survival of the fittest kind of situation. In fact, lately, most of the problem has come from people who have been so scared that they have stayed hidden until they're desperate enough to kill for food. And they come out and they fight people who actually do have enough food that they could share it with them. Uh, but these people are so desperate that they don't, they think that they're in the survival of the fittest situation. That's actually what led us to do door-to-door -door sweeps, which is how I found the safe house today, because we want to find these people who are hiding before they either starve to death or come out and try to kill somebody for food that we would be able to freely give them. In fact, Praxis, things have been stable enough here that there's been a little bit of a barter economy growing, where people have enough food to trade some of it or trade it for other things that they need, like bullets or medicine. In fact, my friend and I have been doing pretty well for ourselves, between the skills that we have to offer for other people and a large quantity of quail that live in the woods behind our house and which we're able to catch pretty regularly. Just yesterday, we were processing some of these quail and getting ready to go and sell them in the neighborhood next to ours where a lot of people gather to try to see what they have so, to trade. Easy break. Just flip them upside down. Upside down is easier because mm -hmm. um, their lungs don't work as well upside down, so they relax. Mm -hmm. If you leave a bird upside down too long, it'll go to sleep. It's gonna stretch out their neck, say it's okay, birdie. Once we've gathered our trapped quail, we decapitate them for a quick and painless death. Then we remove the wings from the rest of the body and it's ready for processing. Quail and other small game like this are really easy to process, which makes them a good trading commodity. We just use a knife to make an incision in the skin at the breastbone, which makes it, the rest of the skin very easy to remove from the body. This is the kind of thing that a lot of us have been really uncomfortable with dealing with, and it's not something that I did a lot before all this, but it's actually been really rewarding to do this kind of work and uh, see the benefits from it in this situation. Uh, anyways, now I'm going to remove the legs from the rest of the body by cutting at the joint. Uh, with the poultry shears, and this just makes it really easy to remove the skin from the rest of the body. Uh, at this point, it really starts to resemble something more like a plucked chicken or something that we as consumers are more used to, maybe. Uh, and it really starts to look like something that you can consider food. Small game animals like these quail are just such a good resource, especially for us here where they're so abundant. Uh, because we're able to get a lot of meat from them, we reuse the feathers to make lures for fishing. Uh, her pet dogs have always had a raw diet, so to them this is just a normal life. They're able to use a lot of the scraps, and we make stew from uh, some of the meats, some of the parts that we can't eat, um, like the spines, which we're removing, we're able to reuse in different fashions. Uh, so we're really not wasting much of these animals, and just because of the ease of processing, we're able to just produce a lot for ourselves and for trade, uh, with very little input in energy and time, really. Speaking of trade, some of the people that I've met to trade these birds with have started asking me strange questions about whether or not animals that I see look diseased or different than normal, or if I see any weird plants. Um, they seem to think something's going around, but I haven't seen anything like that. Anyways, what I'm doing right now is removing the spine from the rest of the body, which really reveals the guts and the rest of the meat. Uh, we're using the guts to attract other animals and to use as fish bait, so I just remove those and set them aside which really just leaves me with the meat, and I'm ready to move on to the next bird for processing. It's just really quick and easy. And then when we're done processing the quail, we can take them to the next neighborhood over where there's sort of a barter market that's already sprung up. And it's pretty crazy to see what people want to trade there. Uh, we've been doing pretty well for ourselves, obviously, because fresh meat is always in high demand in a situation like this. 
but you know things like firearms gasoline water filters um have been just the top shelf items and obviously things like medications like ibuprofen and then you know cigarettes and alcohol just vice items uh, are worth more than their weight in gold uh, because obviously people can't eat gold and that's not as popular as more practical items right now uh, it's just been really crazy seeing this barter economy and i, I wish it was something that i knew more about before all of this. All right, Praxis, it looks like times are changing out there. Uh, I'm gonna try to take this tactical ham unit with me, but I've gotta get out. So I hope I hear from you again, sir. Godspeed out there. It is really cold this morning. Uh, I spent the rest of the day yesterday here and my, the swelling in my ankle has actually gone down just a little bit this morning. Maybe it's the cold, maybe it's the two days of elevating it, but I got a decision today. I mean, do I get up and start moving again? Because I'm pissing through resources. I started going into my juice. I need to get more supplies, but I just invested two days in bringing down the swelling. If I start hiking again, am I gonna, I don't know, am I gonna like just make it all bad again? And, It'll start swelling up. I mean, you know, when you're on the crushes, it's pretty much like a pendulum for your your ankle. So I don't know. I I was reading yesterday. I got this book from the uh, the house, the Grapes of Wrath, which is pretty much a SHTF novel. I wish I had some more cheery reading. It's also kind of a heavy book to bring. I was questioning whether to carry it, but I guess I'm glad I had something to do. I'm just really cold this morning. I'm not sure what to do. I remember those guys. Bunch of fucking pricks. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.